is tough. You have to set boundaries. You set rules. And then you are, if you're going to do the job well, you follow through and you administer uh, punishment when they don't follow those. And you try to do all of this with love so that they know that they are loved, that they're cared for. Well, God, our Abba Father, has some of the same things. He gives us directions. He gives us a handbook for life. But then we struggle following it. And he tries to bring us back. He had some of those same issues with the Israelites in the desert. He has them with his people today. The Israelites are his chosen people. But being God to those people was tough. We visited the Israelites the last couple of weeks. We met up with them at Rephidim where they were angry because they didn't have water. And they, they were crying out to God. And we met them last week at Mount Sinai where we received the Ten Commandments. And this week we're still at Mount Sinai. And listen to these words from Exodus 32. When the people saw that Moses was so long in coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings your, that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol, cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. And afterwards they sat down to eat and drink and get up to indulge in revelry. And then the Lord said to Moses, Go down, because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and they have sacrificed to it and have said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord, his God. O oh Lord, he said, why have your anger burned against your people whom you brought out out of Egypt with great power and mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out of, to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth. Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land. I promise them, and it will be their inheritance forever." Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Moses has been up on the mountain, on Mount Sinai, for some time now. The people are becoming a little restless and a little anxious about what's going to happen next. You know, we tend to do that when we don't know what's coming. We're not sure what we're supposed to be doing. You can imagine some of the people in Florida and Texas and in Alabama, a little anxious about what is coming. They're not exactly sure. They know it's a hurricane. They don't know how bad or how much. But there's, there's some anxious times when we don't know exactly what's in front of us. You can't see the leader out in front of you. And that's the case here. They began to stew and they started to get a little bit agitated. And 
I imagine Aaron was a little bit concerned. Because Moses was the one who reminded them of God and who God was. They were, he was the one they looked to. He was the one that helped to bring them up out of Egypt. Maybe they were just a little bit weary of Moses' leadership. Maybe they'd had enough of Moses. <clears throat> Maybe there was a faith struggle. Maybe they lacked the faith to wait on Moses. We don't really know what all was going on and what was in their minds, but we know from the scriptures that they went to the second in command to Aaron and they said, make us for us gods that will go before us. They were breaking the second commandment that we just talked about last week. They wanted an idol to put out there. Aaron doesn't discourage the behavior. He says, bring me your gold earrings. And he sets right to work carving out a golden calf for them. And then he says, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. Now, I, I struggle with this. Aaron was Moses' right-hand man. He was a speaker for Moses. And then he, he carves out this, this golden calf. And then he says, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you out of Egypt. It's like, man, did you miss something along the way? Did you miss something? But these people are lost. They've lost sight of God and they've turned to idols because Moses was on the mountain communing with God. It happened then, folks, and it happens today. We get lost. We get lost. Aaron saw what was happening. He goes off and he builds this, this altar to the Lord, hoping to keep the people from turning completely away from the Lord. You know, he's trying to, to make amends. We'll have an altar and we'll do a sacrifice here. You know, he's, he's trying to hold it together somewhat, but yet he's already went off the deep end and made the idol for them. As I said earlier, it's tough to be a parent. It's tougher to be God with God's people. This really could discourage us, God's people turning to idols, but as I said, we do it. We do it. And anyone who has been a parent knows how tough it is. And if you've been around very long, you know that God's got his hands full dealing with his people. Because his people tend to turn all different directions and scatter like flies with fly swatter. You see, we could all tell stories about how tough it was raising our kids and things that would bring tears to our eyes. And, but then think about the stories that God could tell about his people. But God says to Moses there, then the Lord said to Moses, Go down because your people whom you brought up out of Egypt have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol cast in the shape of a calf. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Because your people. God was going to turn his back on them and he said, They're your people, Moses. You brought them up. You, you were the leader. And so he says, they're your people. God was ready to turn his back on them. As I thought about that this morning, as I was going through this, the question came to my mind, what does he say about us? What does he say about us? And he goes on. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. So he's going to destroy those Israelites and he's going to make Moses into a great nation. But 
God has done it all for these people. He led them out of Egypt. He saved them from slavery. He fed and watered them so far in the desert. He's going to be with them until they enter the promised land. And he had called them his people. But then the rebellious nature comes out and they turn to idolatry. Forgetting God's love and compassion. I'm surprised he didn't say they were more than stiff-necked. But he calls them a stiff-necked people. Is it any wonder that he was ready for his wrath to burn against them? Because it's tough to be God. Because... It is so easy for God's children to get lost. It is so easy for us to be in the maze and not take the right turn. And to not go the right direction. Moses gets out of their sight for just a few days and they, they lose focus. They turn to other gods. It is easy to get lost. Think about the prodigal son. He started dreaming about this far land, about the women, the music, the festive dancing, how great it would be to be away from home and have no restrictions and not have to deal with being the older son. Probably most of us have dreamed in some way about that, about how we might be someplace else or do something else. We think it would be easier to be in a different place or to go the other way. Because following God can be tough. When you think about the sheep that Jesus talked about, they just nibble away at the grass until they're far from the flock. They pay no attention to the shepherd and pretty soon they're lost because they've taken their eyes off the shepherd. They've went away. Or maybe they, we don't gather with the flock for worship. Or we don't spend time in God's word. We kind of nod at God's word when we walk by once in a while. But we don't sit and let it penetrate our mind and our soul and give us direction. Or we don't pay attention to God's sovereignty, his holiness, his love, and what he would do for us. Because all of a sudden we're focused on me, 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 me. What can God do for me? And sometimes it's not what can God do for me, what can I do for me? What can I do for me? In the world in which we live today, it's easy to get lost. We get busy with profession, with job, with family, with business, and all of a sudden, we're off on the other path, going away. And pretty soon our security is not in God, but in our money and in our investments. And Jesus told a parable in Luke chapter 12 about this very thing. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, what shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. And then he said, this is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool. This very night your life will be demanded from you. Then you will get what you have prepared for yourself. This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Did you notice in there? All the he's, the eyes, the my, it's all about him. And sometimes that happens in our world. Because we lose focus of God. It's so easy to get lost. It's so easy to go around the right path. And that's why it's tough to be God, because his children get lost. I mean, it's not easy for the lost to be found. 
Think about the good shepherd. He left 99 sheep to seek out one lost lamb. Or the woman sweeping all the corners looking for a coin. Looking for the one that was lost. So listen to in 13 how Moses dealt with this in 11 through 13. But Moses sought favor of the Lord God, Lord his God. Oh Lord, he said, why have your, should your anger burn against your people whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all the land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Moses cried out to God. Now, as I thought about this the other day, I thought, how. Oh, Maybe Moses is just being tested a little bit here. Would he intervene for his people? Would he go to bat for his people? Would he be listening for what he needed to do? Verse 14 in the RSV says it this way. And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do to his people. It says God, by that it says... And in the 14 here, then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. Then in RSV it says repented. He repented for what he thought of doing. Think about that for a moment. God loves his people so much, even though he didn't sin, he repented of what he was going to do. In the Greek, it's nihom. And it's a word, it's not the acknowledgement of sin. It means grief and sorrow for what has happened and a new course of action. So most, God was grieving for his people. And he wanted a new course for them. God is grieving for us and he wants us on his course following him. And it's tough to be God because the cost is high to save his people. He paid the ultimate price for the life of his son, one and only son on a cross at Calvary. And God cannot rest until his children all come home. He cannot rest. 2 Peter 3.9 says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. If God cannot rest until we are home, then we cannot rest because we are the hands and feet of Christ to bring the lost in. As I wrestled with this text this week, trying to find the message that God was giving me, as I thought about how tough it is to be God, and the struggles that we have living our life for him. I wrestled. And God trying to keep an obstinate people in line. And I thought about how easy it is for us to get lost. And how much God wants us to be found. And how easy it is for us to lose our way. And then I went back to what Moses did and how he faced God in that time. And he said, but Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. And I thought about God, Moses on his knees crying out to God for his people. And I thought we need to be on our knees crying out to God for the people of the land. We need to be on our knees more. Last Sunday night. 
at prayer time. Jeff shared with us the week before, family was the focus at prayer time. And last Sunday night, Jeff sh shared with us how when they'd been to the kids and they'd talked to them and how things had worked out for them with their uh, foster kids and things, he said, he just went back to think how important it was to pray. And how much difference that was making. That things were working out. The vehicle was coming around. I mean, when you have that many kids and mom and dad, you've got to have a little room to take them. But it just was amazing how God works when we go to him. How God relented when Moses went to him. And how much we need to go to God. We need to keep that connection open. That he might hear us and respond. Amen.